Nevada's premier source for political commentary. Informed opinions about the issues affecting you. From the right, Elizabeth Crom. From the left, Hugh Jackson. This is the agenda. Sure, Nevada puts up a respectable front. The gambling, the drinking, the prostitution. But it's not all positive. Lurking just beneath that admirable and even venerable live and let live veneer can be found an unsettling strain of reactionary social conservatism. Nowhere was this more on display than in 2002 when Nevada voters went for the second election in a row and approved a state constitutional amendment to ban same-sex marriage. The public's attitude towards same-sex marriage has softened rapidly and considerably since then, and while I have no polling at my fingertips to back up such a brazen claim, I will nonetheless just flat-out cold assert that Nevada would reject a gay marriage ban if it were on the ballot today. Meantime, an organization dedicated to advancing civil rights for same-sex couples hopes to get Nevada's ban overturned in the courts. Lambda Legal yesterday filed a federal suit on behalf of eight same-sex couples charging that Nevada's ban on gay marriage violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. One of my favorites, by the way. And joining us to discuss the suit is Lambda Attorney Shelby Day, and we're also joined by Derek Washington of the Nevada Stonewall Democratic Caucus. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Uh, let me first ask you to explain uh, quickly the, the legal argument. We want to talk about the legalities here in this first segment uh, in this federal case. What, what is the basis for it? Well, yesterday we filed, um, as you said, a um, case in the federal district court on behalf of eight same-sex couples um, argue against the state of Nevada, arguing that the state of Nevada's exclusion of same-sex couples from marriage violates the U.S. Constitution's Equal Protection Clause. And the, at the heart of that argument is that the state of Nevada has, by law and public policy, by virtue of the domestic partnership law, afforded all the rights and benefits um, to same-sex couples that are afforded to spouses and hold them to virtually all the, the same responsibilities and obligations as a married couple. But then the state excludes same-sex couples from the honor designation of marriage and there's no rational or legitimate basis for the state of Nevada to do that. Uh, I read this morning the domestic partnership law that's on the books here in Nevada. Is there, uh, you, you, you have cases in other states, and I'm sure you're familiar with the legalities of those. Is there any other state that has a domestic partnership law that's as, I guess I would call it, as loose as Nevada's? I mean, I, mean, I was actually astounded when I read it. It, it reads where there's no difference between marriage legally uh, in the domestic partnership law in Nevada that, that I could find. Well, and that's exactly right. I mean, the state of Nevada affords virtually all the same rights and benefits um, as spouses, and that language is, is it's, basically it's in there. there. It says spouses right. in the law right. repeatedly. And, and um, there are other states like California, and there are about, I think, eight other states that have comprehensive civil union bills or domestic partnership bills. There are other states that have various versions, and that's part of the confusion, I think, is that when you go state from state, domestic partnership means something different. And that's part of the point of our lawsuit. You know, couples like our lead couple, Mary and Beverly, who've been together for over four decades, if someone asks, you know, who is this, they can't say spouse. They say domestic partner. Well, people don't know what that means, but people understand what marriage means. It means something very distinct and has a universal um, meaning in, in our society. And same-sex couples are being excluded from that. And there's no reason if the state says that same-sex couples should be entitled to all the same rights and benefits, you know, there really is no rational reason then to say, well, but we can't call it marriage. Because so many states have so many different kind of constructs, you have some states that allow gay marriage, other states allowing domestic mm -hmm. partnerships, other states perhaps like Nevada allowing domestic partnerships and yet having a constitutional ban. I guess what I'm trying to get at is where Nevada fits in within the context of setting national legal precedent on this issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we a bellwether of some sort? And is Frankly, is that why Nevada was singled out for this suit? Well, you know, there are other lawsuits in other cases. Um, some of my colleagues at Lambda Legal have a, a lawsuit um, in state court in uh, New Jersey. Um, the, the challenge to Proposition 8 currently is working its way. The Perry case is working its way through the court system. And for, for us, um, you know, Nevada was... Um, 
the place that we chose to bring it because you know we have eight wonderful couples who have um, wonderful stories who are committed to this issue and um, this case builds on Perry. Um, it builds on some of the other cases right. and it's it's one of the first cases uh, actually the first case other than Perry recently to be brought in federal court and so it will we hope establish a very important legal precedent. Okay we'll continue that thought uh, and get some more from our other guest Derek Washington right after this. Stay with us about to keep up the fight against the so-called Defense of Marriage Act. There's a bill to repeal this discriminatory law uh, in Congress, and I want to see that passed. But until we reach that day, my administration is no longer defending DOMA in the courts. I believe the law runs counter to the Constitution, and it's time for it to end once and for all. It should join Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the history books. That was President Obama calling for an end to the Defense of Marriage Act last October, though he's been not so outspoken about it since. Welcome back to the agenda. We're here talking about gay marriage and whether it might be coming to Nevada soon with an attorney and a local activist who both say yes. And speaking of local activists, Derek Washington of the Stonewall Democratic Club, I, I have to ask you if you agree with the brazen assertion that I leveled uh, earlier in the program that if the gay marriage ban we're on the ballot in Nevada today because attitudes have changed so dramatically and quickly since 2002 that it would probably fail. Am I on the right track there? Oh, I think that I think it's not even a question that it would fail. In addition, I think when people look at the financial benefits to it, to having uh, marriage equality in Nevada, it would astound you. And I think this is one of the things that we're always talking, trying to talk to the mayor about how Las Vegas would become the LGBT marriage center of the universe and bringing in a lot of dollars. Tell us what you mean by that, the financial benefits, where are those dollars going to come from? Well, because Las Vegas has a natural, uh, um, it's known as the marriage capital of the world. Think of all of the gay couples who would come here and would want to be married here. This would be the premier destination for marriage equality. Would, Absolutely. Would that really happen though until all the states either come to some reciprocal agreement to recognize one another's marriages or until this, the federal DOMA act is overturned? When DOMA is overturned, the floodgates will open even more. But right now, we could actually be generating millions and millions of dollars in gay dollars with marriage equality here in the city. Is this lawsuit here in Nevada with an eye probably ahead to the Supreme Court, I would think, is, is this one path to overturning DOMA or is it just that the gay activists are just trying to basically go at this from all angles and see who gets there first? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, this lawsuit focuses specifically on Nevada and its exclusion of same-sex couples from marriage. There are other cases, other cases that, that Lambda Legal and um, some of our sister organizations have that are working their way through the federal court that actually are targeting DOMA. But this, this case itself looks specifically at the state of Nevada and the state of Nevada's decision uh, to, to exclude same-sex couples from marriage. If you're successful here in Nevada, wh what, what states are next? You said there are roughly 10 states that have very similar domestic partnership laws to ours. Yeah, it's hard. You know, we just filed the lawsuit yesterday, so it would, it's hard to project exactly what would happen. And of course, it depends on um, you know, the court's decisions and, and what those say. Um, Specifically, we're trying to overturn um, the constitutional amendment that prohibits gay people from mar marrying in Nevada. But, you know, it potentially could have an impact beyond that. And we certainly hope that it would potentially to other states that are similarly situated to Nevada. And there's about eight of them. Mr. Washington, I'm wondering, uh, you know, when this was on the ballot in 2002, you saw a lot of politicians, frankly, from both parties, including within your Democratic ranks, who did not want to get any on them. They just did not want to deal with this, did not want to address it. Are you concerned that uh, with the rise of this federal case that there might be some Democrats who, again, will try to hold back and keep their powder dry on it? Or are you expecting folks like Shelley Berkeley to embrace this sort of thing? Oh, we have a pretty strong... Uh, at the head of the Democratic Party, we have a pretty strong progressive streak. And I expect Shelley Berkeley, et cetera, to, to come out and say how she feels about it, and I'm hoping that'll be the right way. Yeah. Um, as far as other politicians, it's my job as head of Stonewall to get out there and educate them on why morally this is the correct thing to do and why financially this is good for Nevada. Do you feel that this puts State Senator John Lee in any kind of an awkward situation? None at all. John Lee has made it very clear he doesn't care for this subject. Uh, I mean, expand on what you mean he doesn't care for it, doesn't want to talk about it? He has made it clear that he has not voted in the past for it and he won't in the future. Yeah, yeah. So will you guys be joining the effort to try to uh, primary him out? 
I would not be up, unhappy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we want to go with this year? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, briefly, um, uh, Shelby, I wonder if you could explain to me how a lot of people, when they saw the Ninth Circuit Court make the ruling on California mm -hmm. and say, okay, we're upholding this, uh, the ruling that says the Prop 8, the ban, is unconstitutional. Right. Can you briefly explain why that doesn't apply to Nevada? Well, um, the court in that case, the Ninth Circuit, wrote that decision where it specifically focuses on California and California's decision to um, allow same-sex couples to marry and then shortly thereafter taking that away. And, and the rights so, had been granted. Right. And then they've been taken and away by taken Proposition away. 8. And so the court could have focused more broadly, but courts tend to focus as narrowly yeah. as they can, and that's yeah. what the Ninth Circuit did. Um, as that case moves forward in the court system, it's possible that we could get a broader decision, but courts yeah. generally don't do that. And so um, as that case works its way up to the Supreme Court, we expect the courts will continue to look at it narrowly. Yes, and I somehow suspect that the Roberts Court is not going to take the broad interpretation of the 14th Amendment that you were just referring well, to. Well, we would like them to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, both of you, thank you very much for coming on the program today. We really yeah. appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Thank Shelby. you. Elizabeth and I will be back with some takeaways about all this in just a minute.